Dude, that's episode 13, dude. Can't end on a sad note, dude. We gotta do one more. Previously on Master Chef. Oh my god. The home cook saddled up to feed a posse of cowboys. It's a lot of freaking cowboys. But when Monty's red team bit the dust, yeah! they faced a pressure test. This is ridiculous. I don't believe I deserve to be in this pressure test. It was a fight to the finish. I'm not going home on an egg, dude. I'm not going home on an egg. And one of the biggest contenders of the season was eliminated. Josh. No spoilers. No spoilers. Humongous. Yeah. We're walking into the kitchen and there is a humongous, gigantic, like larger than life size mystery box. It's like the size of a small New York City apartment. Welcome. Hi guys. What the fuck is in that box, bro? What do they have in that box? You might have noticed we have the biggest mystery box in the history of MasterChef. All right, I can't take the suspense any longer. I know. Please, let's find out the contents of this very special mystery box. Thinking horse, shark tank. Horse, shark tank. You're kind of like, you know, looking down and seeing what it is, and I see these, like, sparkly shoes. What the, the fuck? No! Shut your mouth. <laughs> Shut your mouth! Oh what? It's oh. Paula Deen. Shut up. Oh, hey, yo! <laughs> yo! It's Paula Deen. They're cooking Paula Deen? That's crazy. Why did she let that happen? She's dead now? That's wild. This show has gone off the rails, dude. They're literally cooking her. That's wild. What? The pride of Savannah, Paula Dean. <laughs> I couldn't be happier. I love butter. I love Paula Dean. I love Paula Dean with butter. Paula Dean is a legend in the culinary world. Let's be honest. She has her own magazine with over a million subscribers. She's written 14 amazing cookbooks, and her personality is as dazzling as a food. That's sweet. Listen, at least they didn't put Josh through the emotional trauma of having to be around Paula Dean. You know what I mean? Like. We invited Paula to handpick a mystery box just for you. On the count of three, we will lift those boxes. One, two, three, lift. <laughs> Okay, so y'all can see that you've got in your box a whole chicken, green tomatoes, collard greens, there's grits, there's blackberries, there's... Some of you might not know the lore of Paula Deen, but, uh... Wasn't she, like, originally one of the, the fake uh, cancel culture, which is not real? Like, that was, like, one of the... That was, like, one of the OG cancel cultures. But, like, it wasn't really a cancel culture, obviously. Celebrity chef Paula Dean denies ever she's ever told racial jokes, but she did acknowledge using the N-word according to her deposition in a lawsuit. <laughs> she got sued for uh, sexual and racial harassment. Which, by the way, again... Not cancel culture, like actually illegal, but also was deemed cancel culture. And even then, I think like, what happened with that? Just... No, she was just racist. Cancel culture is bogus. She's an actual scumbag. Okay, but like Paula Dean still has, you know, she's still doing shit. That's my point. Wait. Wait, did she go on MasterChef while this was happening? Oh, no, this is in 2013. This is like literally one season after, right? 
I think she also made her black servants wear white gloves, if I'm not wrong. Oh, no, she did a lot. Paula Dean reportedly wanted black people to play slaves at a wedding. When asked if she uses the N-word, the celebrity chef replied, yes, of course. Donald Trump defended Paula Dean in 2013, said she was wrongfully crucified over N-word. It's a very rough double standard. Wait, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, let's move on to something else that's controversial. Uh, Representative Ringel, Charlie Ringel from New York, went on a racist rant last week when he was comparing the Tea Party to the term cracker, white cracker. Um, here was the quote to the Daily Beast. It is the same group we faced in the South with those white crackers and the dogs and the police. They didn't care about how they looked. It was just fierce indifference to what? the that caused America to say enough is enough. What is happening right now? I didn't remember this part. Yo! Hey, yo, dude! What is happening right now, dude? Oh, God. Oh, no, it's happening again. Oh, full circle. Did you think while we were watching MasterChef that this was going to be a full circle back to the C word? Some people are asking why there hasn't been more outrage when he makes a comment like this, but if it's in reverse there. By the way, 2013 Fox News, 2021 Reddit, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Is outrage. Your thoughts. By the way, this is tied along to a story about Paula Dean. Like Donald Trump is literally going to say the double standard for Paula Dean saying the N-word does not exist for uh, this representative, you know, saying the C-word. Fucking Twitch, dude. God damn it. I, it just makes me, it just like boils my fucking blood that Twitch took action that is in line, in lockstep with 2013 Donald Trump and, and fucking Fox News, okay? It just makes me so mad. Well, you know, I've sort of grown up with Charlie Rangel. I've been in New York for a long time. I know him very well, and he's always been such a gentleman. A joke. A, a nice guy as far as I was concerned, and I'm surprised to see a statement like that. That's a rough statement mm -hmm. and not a good statement, and I wonder whether or not Charlie is sorry he said it. Maybe he's not sorry because there's a group of people that probably say that's wonderful. Isn't that great? But Fox I News Donald Trump complains blacks can say cracker, but we can't say what the fuck. Okay, that's an insane title. If Charlie or if whoever it was was a Republican and they made that statement, sure. they'd be resigning from office right now. Yeah, but uh, Donald, you, you look at the stunning double standard. You know, he is on the left. And then a couple of months ago, you have the instance with Paula Dean where she said one word 30 years ago. Uh, and she was crucified, lost her business deals. Uh, they they took her to task, but Charlie Rangel gets a pass. Yeah, and nothing will happen to Charlie. I mean, I see it all the time. If you're a Republican, you make a statement like that, I, it's over. I mean, you are finished. If you're a conservative, and by the way, the further the further right you are, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a it's a very rough double. It's a double standard. Well, so, it's a very rough. It's a very rough double standard. Of course this man became the president, dude. Are you kidding me? Like, this man reached out into the hearts, okay? This man reached out into the hearts of the, of the American people and said exactly the kinds of words that a lot of people wanted to hear, which is, why can't we say it? Love that. Rough double standard. Paula so, Dean was absolutely crucified. What they did with her, I don't know what even happened to her. They, I see everybody dropped her. She has really got some problems. It's amazing. Oh, they they they, they, they absolutely Stunning. crushed her. So Charlie Rangel's 83. But what about? Uh, so I, you know, you could say, well, maybe he doesn't know what he's saying. But the people who demand consistently demand the Paula Deans of the world be crushed and driven out of the public conversation. Shouldn't they be forced to take a stand on this? Where's Obama in this? Well, <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm losing it, dude. Oh, this is, this is like, I'm losing my mind. This is so perfect. It's like LSF posters in a particular community or Tucker Carlson on Fox News.
Can't tell the difference. Straight up the exact same. Literally the exact same. Hey, a lot of people love the LARP as liberals on Twitter and on Reddit and even on this website, on this platform. And they are engaging in the identical rhetoric, the shameless, cynical rhetoric of Tucker Carlson of 2013. Ooh, how the turntables. Oh, man. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. Fuck. Not going to take a stand, Tucker, and Obama is going to take a pass, and they're all going to take a pass, and that's the way the country is right now. It we have a is. very divided country, yeah. and that's the way it is, and get right. used to it, because it's not changing very fast. Get right, used Donald. to it. we got to right. wrap it up there. Have a fantastic week. Thanks so much, Donald. Thank you very much. Where is Obama on the C word, dude? Oh, so good. Wait, you want to look at the YouTube comments? You want that kind of brain rot? We're going to get no, to Paul in a second. I want to see this, though. Such a good point. POTUS Trump. Wow, they're really dying to say it, huh? He's right. Say whatever you want. Just don't say it around. This double standard will not last for long. They made it sound like on the headline, Trump said it. He did not say anything wrong. <sighs> Good stuff. So. What is Dean sympathizing with slave owning ancestor reemerges? Food Network does not renew her contract. Hoodie, a black Jewish food scholar, wrote an incredibly powerful response. Dean appears on the Today Show. Tells Matt Lauer, I'm not racist. Hey, remember Matt Lauer? Other gal allegations of racism at her restaurants emerge. She abruptly closed the restaurant. She returns to the Today Show to explain what she's learned. Cooking up a comeback. One year later. She posts a photo of her son seemingly in brown face. Wait, what? Dean removed the photo from her social platform shortly after. Wait, what? I can't wait. This could be like liberal bullshit, by the way. Hold up. Let's see. Wait, I want to see the photo. Because she said her son is... Oh, oh no. Oh my God. Wait, what? Oh my God. What the fuck? Wait, why did she do that? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, please look at this part addressing the n-word scandal anyone out there that has never said something that they wish they could take back if you're out there please pick up that stone and throw it so hard in my head that it kills me. Please. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck? This is such 2013 YouTube. Okay, okay, we're done. We're done. Um, God damn, this Paula Dean Stunlock just really was the gift that keeps on giving, huh? Okay, we're done. 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 So she did all this shit, but like she's back on television. Is she not?
RFD TV positively Paula. There she reportedly has been trying out some healthier vegan recipes. Oh, that's the that's the worst offense. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's get let's get back to it. So Paula Dean had a had a saga of her own. Meanwhile, while this is happening, she's on MasterChef, huh? Or this is one year before this popped off. Hot sauce, pepper jelly. There's bacon, cream cheese. You know, there's got to be some cream cheese in there. That's an amazing list of ingredients. I wanted them to have the opportunity to strut their stuff Southern style. You know, put some South in your mouth. Brilliant. <laughs> south in your mouth. <laughs> Love it. Before you start cooking, we have a... She was on MasterChef again this past season? Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, some southern stuff. That's right, you unfaithful Jebediah. A few more surprises. My family is my everything. And I know that y'all have been separated from that kind of support for a while now. So I arranged for y'all to get a little something from home. So if you'll open your drawers, y'all will find a photo of your family. Oh, that's it. And a letter from them. So we opened the drawer and I have a picture of me and my mom and there's a letter there. No mom or dad could ask for anything more of their daughter. Nothing was as much fun to watch as when you and your mom worked in the kitchen together. We are so proud of you. All our love and support, mom and dad. You are a living testament to what people can achieve as long as they have and will too. You are my Aww. hero. You are my best friend. You are my wife. Aww. I can't wait to see you. From your awesome and loving husband, Johnson. She's like, <laughs> they just, they didn't even read David's letter. She was like, I don't know how the fuck you're still in there. Honestly, just keep doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Don't fuck up. <laughs> they didn't even read David's letter. They just passed it and they skipped David. Oh, that's so fucked up. Just like you can skip this ad break at the top of the fucking hour. That's right. If you want an ad-free broadcasting experience, you can skip the top of the hour ad breaks by getting a gifted sub or by subscribing for $5 if you aren't lucky enough or by subscribing for free. If you don't have $5, you can subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime. <sighs> that segue was hot. That was, that was pretty good. That was fucking... I, I just took you on an emotional... Emotional roller coaster. That was clean. That was spicy. Whew. Whew. Okay. I mean, that was good. I like the gloat a little bit. Simpologist, thank you for the five gifted subs. Here's the one-minute ad break now. Papa Shay, thank you for the five gifted subs. All right, let's keep going. Dear Felix, we haven't seen you for over a year now. Your mom and I miss you very much. Thank we know you, you're gold, working very hard these Goldie days. Bat. Undoubtedly, it's for the very 20 the subs. for a young lady trying to find her own career directions in an unfamiliar place. We really are longing for the return of the old days. Love, Mom and Dad. Christine. Yes, Chef. My goodness me, look at that bride. <laughs> Who's that lucky man next to you? My number one fan. What did he say in his letter? That he's so proud of me that I've achieved more than um, people with no obstacles have. Frank, look at that beautiful picture. It's my sous chef. How old is she? She's two and a half. I can't think of a greater source of inspiration today. Ah, oh, seriously, man. Cooking chicken for her today, I'm gonna win this one. No Great. doubt. Trust me, today's advantage is huge. You want this one. You've got 60 minutes to create something magical from those amazing ingredients. Hand-selected by Paula. Your time. 
guys starts right now. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> At first, I'm thinking, you know, it's Paul Dean. I have to make something Southern. But instead of going that route, I want to do something that's using Southern ingredients and then kicking it up a notch. What would you do, Gordon? What would I do? Um, I would do some braised colours with some bacon and make it quite a little bit spicy. I would love to see one of them just do the best kick-ass fried chicken I've ever put in my mm -hmm. mouth. That would thrill me to pieces. I respect that, though. Like, not her racism, but she's right. Christine. Yes, ma'am. How are you doing, Angel? I'm good, ma'am. What are you making, Christine? Um, I'm trying to make bacon wrapped chicken with the jalapeno uh -huh. jelly uh -huh. and some collard greens with a little bit of cream cheese. You're definitely working with some difficult odds not being able to see. And already, you're one of my new heroes. Oh, thank you. Please don't oh, make me cry again, ma'am. I won't make you cry, I promise. Get if away I got from this her, money, Paula. I want to give it to my parents because I feel like they've given everything they have to me. Rotten. That's my motivation. Yo, Rottiness bat signal. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Rottiness bat signal. I'm making a blackberry dessert because my. Yeah, she wasn't even being ableist actually, or she wasn't even pointing out her disability. She was just being. Anti she was being anti Asian. You're already working with a disability. <laughs> oh, okay. Sun let's Danger keep going. loves blackberries, so it reminds me of him. How's it going, David? What do you got? I have uh, some greens with bacon. Holy hell. Mm hmm. Yeah. You got some real flavors happening here. You are not afraid today, Martinez. I'm not going to interpret things that she's saying as racist going forward, okay? I'm sorry. 15 minutes to go. They had to censor her for the rest no, of this episode. Done. So I'm doing oven roasted chicken, and then I'm going to make, I made fried green tomatoes and fried okra, and I'm making biscuits, and I'm going to kind of put it all together. Oh, with my goodness. Okay, this is, okay, are you guys ready for a hot food take? Okra. Absolute doo-doo butter. Not good. Is like so the texture is fucking weird. It absolutely sucks. I feel like people in the South just lie to everybody to like, you know, feed them okra. Just because it sucks. It, there is no reason to eat it. It like doesn't feel edible. Okay. There's so many other things you could fry before okra. Stop saying a deep fried okra. It's like like slimy. Ugh. Ugh. Terrible. Twitter thread incoming. You're fucked in the head. Okra is the shit. Sorry, boys. It's not for me, okay? Pepper. <laughs> One of my favorite foods in the whole world is fried okra. Oh, well, I hope I did it justice. Wow. Chad agreeing with Paula Dean. Nice. Yeah, let that sink in, okay? Last two minutes to go. Come on, guys. Focus on that presentation. The fastest 60 minutes of their life, kind of right? Awesome. Frank's doing uh, chicken galettes. Very, very restauranty. A little bit risky. A little bit out of the box today. And that sounds good. There's nothing better than that chicken skin. Right. And Monty, I think the only one tonight doing a, a dessert. No, I was so surprised. Let me get get the chicken on the plate. Wow. He's got nothing on the plate yet. 90 seconds to go. Come on, Christine, please start plating. Last 10 seconds, guys. 10. Nine. Someone in, the, someone in the chat had the audacity to say, it's okay, you're a colonizer, you don't have the gene. Are you telling me that Paula Dean doesn't have the colonizer gene? That I somehow have? Are you insane? Paula fucking direct descendants of slavers whom she adores and admires, Dean, somehow doesn't have the, the colonizer gene, but I do? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Come on, finishing touches. Oh my gosh, y'all get it, get it, get it. Five, four, three.
three, two, one, and stop, guys. By well the way, done. okra is in Turkish cuisine too. It's called bamya, and I fucking hate it. Oh my god. Terrible. It's literally what they serve to you in the military in like fucking food halls. It's like dog shit food. Having carefully tasted everything throughout the challenge, the back. judges, accompanied by special guest judge Paula Dean, take one final look to identify three standout dishes. I'm looking down at my dish and I'm thinking, you know, this could potentially be the one to put me in the top three. What do you think? Excited? You know what? I am excited, Gordon. I've kind of slipped a taste here and there. Good girl. They look beautiful. The first dish that we'll be tasting was one of the few that actually made fried green tomatoes. She's smiling. It's Becky. Come on up. Freaking Becky. It's always Becky. Can't she just screw up already? Hi, Miss. Congratulations, Becky. Oh, thank Becky. you so much for choosing to try it. So I made oven roasted chicken with homemade biscuit and pan gravy alongside fried green tomato, fried okra, and uh, pepper jelly. All right, now where where is the pepper jelly? Uh, it's in, mixed in with the cream cheese underneath the fried green tomato. Mm. <laughs> I love that, Becky. Thank you. I love a sweet and savory mixed. Oh, awesome. Yum. <laughs> I left you some. Thank you. <laughs> All of us were really nervous bringing Paula in. I mean, you know, you guys are an extension of what we do and what we represent. And you've done us proud. Great job. Thank you so much, Chef. You put food on a plate with great finesse. Thank great you job. so much. Thank you all so Good much. job. All right, the second home cook that has made it into the top three. Oh, Paula Dean picked all whites. Got southern it. Southern ingredients to a whole nother level. Please step forward, Frank. Oh, never mind. A POC. I am kind of surprised that Frank's name is called. I don't imagine Frank cooking southern food. Oh man. Hi, Paula. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. This is chicken roulade, bacon on the inside with peppers, onions, garlic, and green tomato, red pepper chutney with spicy potato fries. I love it. Is that southern food? I I've never had this before. I have no idea. Some people are saying no. Some people are saying yes. You've chose the dark meat. <laughs> uh, the dark Southern Italy. Thank you, Okra Enjoyer. And thank you, Greta Chetta, for the five good subs. Okra enjoyer, you're wrong, but it's okay. Thank you. Meat is where all the flavor is. Yes, ma'am. And it's delicious. Thank you so much. Woo! <laughs> is that just from the pepper jelly? <laughs> no, that's got cayenne in there, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's delicious. It's tart and it's hot. Thank you so much. I can't believe is... Paula Dean's eating my food. The technique is fancy and skillful. Butchery, cooking, smart. You certainly got yourself noticed. Cool. Look at the consistency here. It's really a great, great show of technique. I'm really proud. Good Thank job. Thank you so much, Chef. Oh, my God. OK. We're going to be tasting Bro, just Graham one more Bro, Graham is blasting fits. I didn't even do a Quite fit frankly, check on this episode, but goddamn. This God individual was disappearing in the competition. But this dish will bounce that person back. This is their best dish so far in this competition. Rotinez. David. Shut the fuck up. Get the no. What is it? Red pepper that does look grits good. with pan roasted chicken breast. That looks and good a little as bit fuck. Of crispy onion on top with a sprinkling of cayenne. That looks good as fuck. I hate the report that that looks good as fuck. 
love the idea of what you're doing with the peppers and jalapeno through the grits and you've taken Paula Dussy and not steak. Paula Dean's like grandson thank you for the five tasty thank you chef. delicious bloody good job thank well you done. thank you congratulations David thank you Thank you very much. What do you mean, a bland, boring dish like grits? <laughs> oh, grits. <laughs> Busted. Bro, if you're British, you're not allowed to call any dishes bland and boring. Let's be fucking real, okay? You eat boiled chicken, dog. I can't believe they let David make chicken after, you know, routinely making everything raw, but... They need help, don't they? You can't just boil grits. They need you help. They need, they need love. You're right, though. You do have to help grits out, Gordon. Otherwise, they can be bland. I think that you prove that you can take very humble food and turn it into a wonderful, wonderful plate. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was a tough decision to make. Three remarkable dishes. As you all know, there's only one of you can actually win. Waiting to announce the winner, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I have a shot at this. I may, in fact, have the top dish of the day. This is my fourth time being in the top three, and I'm so excited. I'm just hoping, like, more than anything in the world that they call my name. It's mandatory that I win this mystery box challenge, and I better beat Becky. Paula. The best dish of the night belongs to, please. I just, I hate that it's a comeback for raw dishes right now. In Paula Dean's Southern Mystery Box Challenge, the top three dishes have been tasted by the judges. Becky's roasted chicken, Frank's chicken roulade, and David's red pepper grits with chicken. There can only be one winner. Paula, please. So the best dish tonight. Was yours, Frank. Yes. Good job. <laughs> Great flair. Tremendous skill. Frank. Good job. The dish Thank tonight. you cold complaints and let you keep it you. Thank you so much. It's awesome to win one of these challenges. It really just proves to me that I'm definitely a top competitor in this competition. Are you ready to Teach see it. this huge advantage? You betcha. Before we do that, I'd like you all to join us. I'm thanking this amazing lady, Paula. You've been amazing. Thank y'all for having me. Y'all were wonderful. Bye, girls. Bye, guys. Bye. What is going on right now, dude? Mr. Sallykins, a, a Flora Bull, dog like Nate. Why are you guys gifting subs all of a sudden? What the fuck's happening? Frank, well done. Thanks, Chef. First Coming out of nowhere, won. dude. A mystery box. Not the last, though. This one comes with a huge advantage. Ready to see what it is? I can't wait, man. Let's, Let's go. go. Well done. Congratulations. Go. Good job. Huh? Brilliant. Good job. Thanks, Joe. Welcome to the Master Chef Pantry. Come through. As the winner of the mystery box challenge, Frank is now in control Dizzy of Josh. the elimination test, after which one person will leave the competition. Today, you won't be getting to choose what everyone will be cooking. We've already done that for you. Okay. This next elimination challenge is all about Japanese food. Holy It's an incredibly skillful challenge today, one that will be asking you to execute the aesthetic, the technique, and the real skill that it takes to put Thank a you, sushi platter like this on the table. Wow. My first visit to Japan was the one thing I wanted to master. Yeah. But to be totally honest, it's one of the most difficult things I've ever had to learn. And I've got 12 Michelin stars. Here's what the good the news. Fuck? For winning. Here's 12 Michelin stars. Smooth. Thank you for the five years as well. You have immunity from this elimination test. Here's some even bigger news. You're really cooked if you do a heater round when there's an uneven number. 
because you have to participate. I've, I've recognized that like, you're really, you're really just screwed. If you win, if you win the fucking pressure test on an uneven round, then they, ha you have to be a part of it. And if it's an even round, it's like, you're good. And you get immunity. It's nuts. Fucked up. Raw penis fingies. Thank you for the gift of stuff. What? Yeah! Please, come down to the front. Step, step, step. Frank did not get to choose what everyone will be cooking today. That was our choice. And that is going to be... Japanese. This amazing Japanese platter is exactly what we're expecting from all of you. A perfect replication of that platter there. This plate consists of stunning, crisp vegetable tempura, a California roll, two salmon sushi, two yellowtail sushi, two tuna sushi, and two shrimp sushi. <laughs> this Are is you this kidding? is David Martinez's sushi music playing, only dude. Makes sushi. It's an extremely, extremely specific area of the culinary world. The good news, you guys don't have to make this dish alone. You are going to be broken into teams of two. The bad news is, Frank handpicked the teams. Oh, no. We will select the worst Japanese Thank you, AJ platter. Blue, for the fire. Get the subs. And one member of the losing team will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen tonight. Becky, Frank, paired with you, David Martinez. Becky is my biggest competition. So I'd put Becky with somebody that, first of all, doesn't know how to make sushi. Second of all, David is a disaster. So if I can put them together and they clash, I can take Becky down. Felix, Frank has paired you with Monty. Monty and Felix butt heads a lot. And having them both on the same team is definitely dangerous. Which obviously means Frank paired Christine and Stacy together. We are about to make MasterChef history with our first ever tag team challenge. Each team will have 60 minutes to make one dish, but you will not be cooking at the same time. You will decide which of you cooks first, and when you hear us yell, switch, you'll trade positions. Please, head to your stations. When it comes to sushi, man, honestly, I do kind of know my um, I've never done it myself, but I've seen it done so many times. Decide first amongst yourselves who's starting. Okay, you should start. We have 60 minutes to recreate with this sushi master spent 150 years perfecting. Sure, let's do that. All right. Okay, there's a California roll in, in there too, you know? I had coffee today. Can the individual not, not all of it has been mastered for 150 years, okay? not cooking at the beginning please stand at the end of the bench thank you your 60 minutes starts now rice all right yeah we got to get get two cups of rice we need to rinse it a bunch of times then the ratio is going to be about one to one with a little bit of extra water stacy can you talk to me about the vegetables yeah there was one one broccoli floret there was maybe two or three pieces of the carrot sticks one strip of eggplant that i saw okay let's start some boiling water in like a medium saucepan for the shrimp thank medium saucepan boiling water for shrimp this thank you teba jpeg and also Attaining gun is for the five get the sub. This is the toughest elimination test so far. They've got to work as a team. To me, this is where you stop being friendly with people. If you see someone messing up, you got to call them out on Big it. Time. First and thing you up is the rice. Right. One, three, After that, well. you start preparing the batter. Mm -hmm. Start cutting the vegetables. The fish is on ice, so that can sit there to the very last moment. Right, and it's raw. So, I mean, you're literally, it's just knife work, right? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, debone that Monty, how are you doing? Doing amazing, sir. How much do you know about Japanese cuisine on a scale of one to ten? One. One. Yes, sir. Is it really that bad? Uh, sir, I've never made sushi before. Oh, oh. Okay, set it aside. Let's do vegetables. Yeah. 
You know, that's, I mean, she doesn't really understand Japanese cuisine properly. So how are you feeling? Um, I feel okay because I'm just talking to her and then we're working sure. through it. So I Suppose think it's going to be lose. really good. Who's going home? Suppose we lose, Monty's going to go home, but we're not losing. Good luck. Right, Talk to you. each other. Thank you. You got two minutes, Christine. Is this your broth? Is this what you're making for your, uh, um, your sauce for the rice vinegar. tempura? Uh, yes. If you guys are in the bottom two, which one of you are going home? I don't know. I guess whoever screws up, but hopefully not me. You guys are about to switch. Okay, yes. so get ready. OK. Five, four, three, two, one, switch. All right. Keep prepping veggies. Vegetables. Keep Think prepping the veggie. You have four slices there already. You don't need any more. I know, but you put them in water, and that made me nervous. Because I think that you need to get as little water in there as possible, you know? If you could start soaking the uh -oh. nori. Soak the nori? Yeah. I don't. You don't soak it necessarily before the sushi roll. I think you just put it in there dry. You put it in there. You put it, you soak the, you soak it first? Yes. Trust me, I got this, I got this. You're making me nervous. David and Becky are the weak team here today that Frank's strategy is working because he wants to get Becky out of this competition by putting her with David. David will bring her down. We just need the, okay, let me just try this one thing, okay? Like this? No. Wait, is that eggplant? Like what the fuck they were cutting? I, I wasn't, I don't even, what were they cutting? Yeah, they've got their work cut out. The yeah. communication skills have to be better than ever before. Right. For winning the mystery but it's a box, Japanese egg Frank plant? has immunity and got to choose the teams yeah. for MasterChef's first ever tag team challenge. Switch! Their task is to replicate an incredible sushi plate. Based on their individual performance, the judges will decide which member of the losing team will be eliminated. So what's going on? Rice is on. The rice is on right now. Is it now. seasoned? Did you get it? Was it? Did we season the rice water? I don't remember. No, ma'am. Why would you cook the rice with no salt in there? Um, chef, it's something that I that I uh, quickly overlooked, to be honest with you. It's not okay. Oh no. Monty, that's a pretty fancy play we're asking you to make. Yes, sir. Uh, what are you going to do to pull your end of the weight on this team? Felix cooks sushi all the time. I'm definitely going to follow her lead on this. Do you think she's got the skills to carry both of you effectively? Because that's what she's doing, right? Yeah, I think Felix is a, a warrior in this challenge. This is her challenge. Christine, can you talk to me? I'm cutting the yellowtail also against the grain, like the tuna. Like the tuna? Yeah. I did it like the salmon. They're not the prettiest cuts in the world, man, I'm telling you. Just try to be quick. I think we're, we're, we're moving pretty slow, Stacey. Oh, I'm trying. All right, Stacey. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm OK, Chef. If you clean your knife every slice, you won't get all those little bits of tuna yes, on chef. top of it. Thank yeah? you, Chef. Just over two minutes to go before the switch. OK. Five, four, three, two, one, switch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's get started at that t on the temp batter, even if it'll sit. Whip one egg in there. Whole egg? Yep, whole egg. I'm stressed out, Christine, bro. how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine, Chef. I'm happy just with... trying to season the rice a little bit, Good. and then I need to start on the tempura. Happy with the rice? Um, I think you could use a little more seasoning, but it needs to cool down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's more so... important, isn't it? Cooling down, yes. especially before you put the sushi together. Do you think your team's in front? I'm not sure, Chef. I can't see around me. All right, David, yes, how sir. are you feeling? Pretty frazzled right now, sir. The batter. Are you putting egg whites? Are you whipping the egg whites? Is there egg in there? What are you doing? Um, I asked Becky to put some egg in the batter. She didn't, so I'm going to add egg white to the batter myself. If your team's up for elimination, who deserves to go right now? David. David. Not me. 30 seconds to go before the final switch. Whoa, that is so bad. Oh, Felix is literally in control. Amazing. She uses Monty. I don't think David has had a single team situation where he is like. I, I just don't think he's ever had a good team setting uh, uh, performance. Again, she tells her what to do. Monty follows directions. Let's see if she has enough strength to carry that team through. She looks like she's just nailing it. Oh my god, dude, this seems impossible. Christine and Stacey, on the hand, are struggling big time. Yeah. The knife skills, the pair earring, the, the butchering, if they look, they're at least 10 minutes behind both of the teams. Right now, I think that at risk is, I mean, Becky and David. I, I think David is so out of his element. I mean, serious flaws. They've oversliced 
all that salmon, all that yellowfin, mm -hmm. all that tuna, and they just sat on their board. Please, please, I please. Got it. You I gotta got put it. those sushis I together, got it. okay? Chill. Start putting the sushis together. Five. Check four, on the temp. Check on the temp. Three, two, one, switch. Okay, Maki roll. This is this is make yeah. or break now. No one's got the roll done yet. No. You got this, Felix. Beautiful. All right, that's what I like to hear, girl. This is it. Stacey, just get, get those vegetables in there and then pull out that crab and then just try to do that roll. Oh, lordy. Start putting it on the plate, guys. You got it. We need to slice that fish up. OK, oh come on. Oh, my God. Stacy. Look at Stacy. I mean, Stacy is flummoxed. She's gone. Train wreck. We haven't even seen her like this in the whole competition. It's, it's like a tailspin. Oh, my god. No, 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 no. They're to your left. Where? Where? Okay, Top okay, of the okay. left. Right Boom. Here? No, they're already cut for you. Where? Right, right here? there. That's a, like a long, weird chunk, though. David's driving the bus, but he might be driving her off the cliff. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Last minute. 60 seconds to go. Come on. Get what you can on the plate. Stacy is in trouble. What is she doing? Oh, God, this temper is horrible, dude. Oh, dear, dear. Catastrophe. Oh, man. Even wet hands to do the rice or what? Oh. Uh. The rice gets pressed down into the nori. Got it, got it, got it. David, get it together. No, no, no. Yeah, the rice goes in. That goes last. That goes last. One flat, even strain on the nori. I have faith in you. Okay, I've got the tempura. Get that California roll done, guys. Come on. Stacy, right. just do the roll. Do the roll. No, no, no. Please listen. Please just listen to me. Come on, guys. Pull it off. Stacy, come on. You're badass. You can do that roll quick. All right, I got it. I got it. I got this. 30 seconds to go. Come on, Bex. Move the fingers. You got this. You got this. You got this. God, I want to myself. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have faith in you. 20 seconds to go. Oh, my God. Dude, I don't have the roll, Christine. 15 seconds to go. Just get it on the plate. I'm please. trying, Christine. I know, really... I know, hon. Last minute. 60 seconds to go. Come on. Oh, my God. Get what you can on the plate. I have wasabi. Wasabi, wasabi cream. Dude, I don't have the roll, Christine. Ten. We're not nine, there, dude. Eight. Get all the rest of the seven, pieces on their back. Six, five, four, three. It's nothing I can two, do. One, and stop. No! Ah! Damn it. Wow. That was a. This was the most insane challenge, dude. Challenge. Well done. I'm looking at the plate and I'm thinking, it looks like. And if this plate of sushi came to me at a sushi bar, I would send it back. So I'm like, that's it, we're done. After all the dishes have been tasted, one member of the losing team will be eliminated based on their performance during the challenge. <laughs> okay, it's time to taste your dishes. Felix and Monty, come up. Felix finished. 14 pieces of sushi in four minutes and 45 seconds. That's about as impressed as I've ever been with anybody. Ah, very nice. Very good. Who made that? I made that. I mean, obviously, this is a, a beautiful dish. It's completed. This is delicious. A lot on the line. You completed all the tasks, and some of the elements are actually very good to excellent. Thank you. The first thing that catches my eye is the California roll with these tobiko, this flying fish roe. It's literally, it's glistening. It looks like a piece of jewelry almost. And then the tuna, we're gonna cut on that. It's nice and even. And Monty, you did the vegetables? Yes. Not only a, a really good batter, but the cookery, really, really good. You know, the fact that you guys literally had 60 minutes as amateur home cooks, you both deserve a good pat on the back. I think that you guys did a really good job. Thank you so Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I think you played your strengths well. Monty never made a role in life. Big deal. I'm looking at the end product. Well done. Thank you I mean, so they... Much. Really good job. I mean, Felix fucking we carried, really dude. We great together as a team. Felix absolutely fucking carried. We together.
Thank you, sir. You stayed composed, unlike the two teams. This one was a weird challenge. Like, it wasn't Somebody balanced was at all. I don't you. feel like... I don't think it showed, like, culinary skill at all. David and Becky, please. Why are you question marking? I guess it's teamwork, I want to but win like this more than anyone else here. It's it's teamwork, but it's like, bro, you you're, you're doing 15 minute swaps, like that's fucking insane. So if they were to ask me if there's one person to blame for this, then I will point my finger fully at David. No, sushi making is like incredibly difficult as a skill, perhaps too high level for like average chefs to to fucking engage with if they've never done it and then also on top of that i feel like the 15 minute swap made it even harder any sauce uh i was struggling at the end but no there's no sauce no sauce do you think that looks good no chef it does not i was just so concerned with getting things on the plate who sliced the salmon david david it looks like it Dogs chewed it. I mean, you had the best of the best. Look at that. Wasabi on there. And not an ounce of wasabi on the next one. Oh, he's just like butchered. Who put that together? I put that together, sir. Why would you do one so clumsy like that with loads of wasabi on there and the other one with nothing? What does that tell you? Um, that I was... Out of control. Out of control, sir. I mean, I... Expected more, to be honest. David, this is your specialty. He's fucking this raw, David. How'd you fuck me, it quite up, frankly, David? Becky, because I think today I saw a side of you that was a little bit, well, quite frankly, very disappointing. You can't lead when it's convenient and then duck your head when the <laughs> hits the fan. He seemed more comfortable cutting the fish and he. Yeah, made but you, it clear, so I, you I were leading the charge as cooks, as leaders in kitchens and in restaurants. When you lead, you lead through the good and the bad. Bro, that's nuts. It, it, like, you've been here for 13 episodes. You know this motherfucker doesn't listen to shit. The blaming, blaming fucking Becky in the situation is just like bananas. You know what I mean? It, it's just not even remotely her fault. <laughs> the best thing about this plate is perhaps that everything's on it. This is greasy, disgusting mess. I don't know who would eat this. Maybe uh, Frank's strategy actually worked in eliminating his strongest competition. I'm pissed because Becky couldn't step back. I'm pissed because she was really opinionated. I don't think Becky understands the gravity of the situation right now. We're f best thing about this plate is perhaps that everything's on it. Tonight's elimination challenge was to replicate a stunning sushi plate in MasterChef's first ever tag team challenge. All right, Stacy, Christine, please come up. Based oh. on their performance, the judges will decide which member of the losing team will go home. Stacy and Christine walk up and it's so hard for me not to freak out because they're two of my favorite people. And apparently they didn't finish a roll. They didn't even fry their tempura. This sucks. I mean, straight up, there's a massive disadvantage here. Like, let's be fucking real, dude. I mean, the ones that they made were really good. It looks like. But like, come on, you know, that's, that's fucking bananas. It's a time competition. It requires precision. I guess one could say, well, that's what it takes to be in a kitchen, but like, you know. Pussy gotta be communist. How she leaving squirt marks on my linen sheets. Thanks for, thanks for showing me that tweet. GD perp 7110. 710. That was, that was very good. Thanks. Obviously you're missing a main component. That being the California roll. Stacy, you were working like there was a, a semi coming at full speed, and you were in such a panic. It was, it was almost making me nervous to watch. The thing is, the tuna looks really nice, but the veggies 
they don't have any batter on them. Mm -mm. It's a shame. I really wish that uh, we could have seen an, an entire plate. Yep. You know. Who sliced the fish? I did, Chef. And who cooked the rice? I did, Chef. Rice is fine. The cut's dreadful. And what are they? Pass your fingers, please. Anyway, just there. Absolutely raw. Raw. I'm nervous. He's fucking raw. Because wrong. this is the worst performance. Absolutely. From both of you. There's no doubt in my mind now that we lost this challenge today, and one of us is going home. Congratulations, Felix and Monty. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you. They were the highs, but there is one low point in this challenge this evening. The losing team with the worst Japanese platter would like to see down here, and one of whom will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen in seconds. Stacy and I squeezed hands because we know we're going up there, and I'm ready to walk up that, that walk with her to the front. The losing team tonight. <sighs> Stacy and Christine, please come down. Oh no. Oh no. Oh Felix, no, no, no. Monty, Becky, David, congratulations. You're through to the final six. Please join Frank upstairs. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well done. Bro, bro, not, not this Christine. This is not an easy decision. We need a minute. David fucking Rotinez. He just slid his way to the top six. I'm losing my mind. If Christine gets eliminated, I'm boycotting the show. If Christine gets eliminated over David, it's fucking raw Martinez. Dude, he like he he has the the culinary skill of me, okay? Like I suck. It's wild that they just like they keep any by this episode, he knows it too. You can see it in his eyes like he started off with like bravado cockiness confidence he was like yeah i'm popping off i'm fucking popping off baby let's go and like now you can tell whenever people yell at him he's just like me like he knows he's not good even he knows it why are you you're doing a disservice by keeping him on the show You're way too into this. You cannot boycott whoever walks out. Okay, shut the fuck up. I'm just, I'm posturing. I'm talking about boycotting a show on a season that we're watching from like 10 years ago, okay? Minute ourselves. Please excuse us. This is tough. This is tough. Sorry, everyone melted down. I think, yeah. Christine and I, we failed each other on a few levels. I should have done this. Should have. If it has been worse consistently than like most of the other contestants that have been eliminated, like at first it was like one or two, three or four, and there was like some other people that were bad. So, you know, you didn't really care as much, but it's gotten to a point where like the past six eliminations, you're like, how is David alive through this? Like there's been like six people so far that have been knocked out with the exception of Tali, where you're like, this doesn't make sense. How is he still here? I could have done that. I, I could... Shoulda, woulda, coulda all day. Without the jello of sushi, I never thought it would beat me down like this. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I am frustrated because I had a more positive attitude than Stacy. I did keep more composure than her. Eat the Ritz, I thank you for the five gifted subs. Coming out. Okay. Sadly, one of you have to leave the mouse chef kitchen both of you have been a dream two very 
inspirational, dynamic girls that have a huge passion for what they do. And I'm telling you, two incredible home cooks. The person leaving tonight is... If it's Christine, I'm going to be pissed. You can't. Stacy. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh my Lord. Oh, my fucking Lord, dude. Holy shit. That's like... Unacceptable. That would have been... Stacy. You have been an inspiration in this competition. You've got to keep your head up high, let me tell you. But that was the first time that we really saw you panic. I think today's challenge perhaps- Christine has massive plot armor? No, she doesn't, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? Christine is blind and she literally sensed that Stacy was cutting the tuna incorrectly, okay? And literally said, are you cutting the tuna incorrectly? And Stacy said, yes. <laughs> She's not only blind, but also on the other side of the fucking table. And she had better situational awareness than Stacy did in front of her face. That's insane. That was, yeah, that was some straight daredevil shit, dude. Here's some Stacy lore. Stacy Amagrande was a market manager from Ample Valley, California. She was eliminated in MasterChef Season 3, Episode 13, after her Japanese sampler failed to impress the judges. After MasterChef, Stacy became executive chef at 7th Heaven Cafe which closed in 2015. Perhaps got the better of you. There was a little bit of a, a rare negativity that I saw coming off the sidelines and just a bit of a tailspin that cost you. But uh, I had a special commitment because- By I the way, it's not even a fucking joke. I mean, Stacy is still significantly better than David Martinez, okay? Like, not even a question. Not even a competition. Pulled you out of that waiting room. Yeah. Brought you back in. Changed my mind, and I think it's one of the best decisions I made. Well done, my darling. Come and say goodbye. It's been a complete honor, really. Well done. You. Mm -hmm. You've got a great future in food. Great job, Stacey. Thank you. I apologize. Extra lore. Stacey's currently a chef for a private chef company called Rainbow Chef Services. That's sick. I can Yo, how are there so many private chef companies, by the way? Only like, that, that is weird. Only be proud of how far I've come. I don't believe there's a day that goes by where I don't think about Joe coming out <laughs> with the apron, changing his mind, giving me a chance. It's been a roller coaster. It's been a whirlwind. It's been extremely educational and enlightening. Bravo. Thank you, Joe. Complimenti. <laughs> and it has broadened my dream wider than I could ever think possible. So, thank you, Master Chef. Next week on Master Chef. Everything you know. Oh! Cut it. Okay. Um, I'm done. Uh, I I'm done for tonight. No, 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 I can't do one more. I can't. Straight up.